Hello, it's James Photography again, and this is the second tutorial that I'm going to do on uh, photography terminology. The one I did before, the first one was shutter speed, and I said in that video that I'm going to talk about aperture next. What is aperture? Now, the three things that I think really combine together at the beginning of uh, photography with your camera is shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. And you're going to see how all three work together, kind of like the brake pedals on your car, not the brake pedals specifically, but when you learn to drive, you've got accelerator, brake, and clutch, and you're all working them all three together like that in tandem to balance each other out. And so it is with shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. There's lots of other things to do with the camera, which we're gonna get into, but those three are like the mechanics of what happens when you press that button, those three things kick into place. So hopefully you've watched the shutter speed video, and hopefully that's made a bit of sense as to what's going on when the shutter opens and closes, whether it's blurry or sharp. And now we're going to move on to aperture because that's the next thing. So it is very similar to your eyes, actually. I said in the shutter speed video that the shutter is like your eyelids, how long they stay open and close, like when you blink and open. Now, aperture is very similar to your eyes as well. When it's like your pupils, um, when you look at something very bright, your pupils go very, very small. When you're in a dark situation, your pupils open up very, very wide. So I'm going to show you what aperture is now in a lens. So here's a prime lens. This is a 50 mil prime lens. And if I go there, it's probably out of focus there, but the aperture is very, very small. But when it opens up, you can see it opening. It might be better here, actually. That's the widest aperture, and then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller to the smallest aperture. So that's what's happening with your camera and it's the same as your pupils as well. So when it's dark, your eye, your aperture is very wide like that. And when it's small, when it's light, sorry, it's small. So hopefully, hopefully you can see that, okay? So that is aperture. Now this is a good example because this is an F1.4 lens. That's a big, big aperture, okay? I'm gonna talk about that later on when I talk about lenses and what they mean and different types of things, but just gives you an idea with an actual lens. So when you take a picture, it will go like that to what aperture you've chosen. So I'm gonna put this away. So how does this help? Now, shutter speed we spoke of, how long the shutter um, is open affects how much light hits that sensor. And so it is with aperture as well, um, how wide it is. So it's not, like a it's not like a movement thing with aperture. That's the shutter speed, that controls movement. The aperture controls how much light comes in. So the wider you are, the more light comes in, and the smaller the aperture, the less light comes in, okay? So it's like um, a torch. I don't know if you've ever had one of those torch or used ones where you can twist the end of it. So if you twist it wide, the, the beam goes really wide like that and illuminates everything in front of you. And then when you narrow it down, it sort of pinches it in small, and then that beam is long and thin and it goes for a lot further, but it's not illuminating everything. It's very similar to aperture as well. It's how much of that light is coming into the sensor, whether it's a small amount or a wide amount, and that is aperture. So if you've got a lens that can open up quite wide, like the one I just showed you, then that's great in low light situations because it's not pushing the camera so much, it's not pushing the ISO, which we're gonna talk about next, how sensitive the uh, sensor is and it lets more and more light in. So that's great when it comes to aperture. So naturally you're gonna think, well, I want it at the widest aperture all the time. But if you're outside and it's bright and sunny, then you don't want it at the widest aperture at all because then it will be too wide. If you uh, shot in manual and you had the aperture at its widest and you had a slow shutter speed and you took a picture outside, the image is just gonna be white because it's too bright and it's just, going to whitewash the image. There's too much aperture and the shutter speed is too slow. You can balance that out with shutter speed. If you do want a wide aperture for a specific reason, which is what I'm going to talk about in a minute, then you slow down the shutter speed. So you balance them out to a level. So you have a faster shutter speed to let more light in with the aperture. So then it balances out. We're going to talk about that in another video, how you can work all three together to get a certain type of shots where you control the photo that you want. So, when it's a really wide aperture in a low light situation, that's great. It's letting lots and lots of light in. And then when you're outside, you can have a smaller aperture um, where it doesn't really matter. Now, aperture control is a very important thing. It's not just about how much light comes into the image, how much light, how big that aperture is in the lens and how much light it's letting in. That's great and that does help an awful lot. 
But another thing the aperture controls is the focal point, how much is in focus. Now here's a term for you for the terminology. There's a term you might have heard of called shallow depth of field. Shallow depth of field. Now you know when you see these really good looking professional shots where the subject is nice and sharp and everything but everything behind is quite blurry. Even this video now I've set it at a reasonable aperture, not quite low, not the lowest it can go. So the background is quite blurry at the moment but I'm hopefully in focus. So I'm in focus. So from about here to about here is where things are going to be in focus. Anything after that isn't going to be in focus and anything in front of that, like my hand now, isn't going to be in focus. So the depth of field that I've set is about here. Now if I set the focus point to further away, perhaps it was overlooking a horizon or something like that, then that depth of field would broaden. Like if, if you're shooting, say, a mountain in the distance, then the depth of field could be like half a mile where everything is going to be in focus, sometimes a mile, it depends. But the closer you are to the lens, the more that crunches down that shallow depth of field. So if I focus to about here and put it at its widest aperture, like that lens that I just showed you, then there'd only be about that much in focus, absolutely that much. You know when you see those really detailed shots, perhaps uh, cookery images, where there's just a tiny morsel of the food that's in focus and all the rest is blurry? That's because it's a really wide aperture and it's creating a shallow depth of field. So it's similar to the torch beam. The torch beam goes wide like that. When you open it to its widest, the torch beam spreads out and whatever it hits, that line of light that it hits, it's very broad, but it's also going to be very thin. That light isn't going to go very far, is it? But if you narrow that torch beam down into a thin beam, it will go on for miles and whatever it hits, even though it's going to be a small particle of light, it's going to illuminate for a lot longer. And so it is with aperture. When you put the aperture down, that focal point narrows and it sort of goes out more. So more things are going to be in focus. So if you're doing like a portrait session of someone, you want perhaps you're at the same sort of distance that I am to the camera now and you want all of their face, uh, perhaps to their ears, to the front of their nose in focus. You've got to be really careful with the aperture. It's all very well having a nice wide aperture and a big lens that can let a lot of light in like the one I just showed you. But you don't just want like the tip of their nose in focus and then everything else blurry, okay? You want everything, so that's when you start playing around. So usually like a f5.6 or an f7.1 will be a nice shallow depth of field to get everything in focus. Now sometimes if it's a, port, um, a landscape shop or if it's a, an image where you want everything in focus, say you've got a group photo with layers of people sort of sitting behind each other and going up, you want them all in focus. So you're going to have to get the aperture down to make sure you've got a more, a wider depth of field to get everybody in, okay? So you don't just want like say the middle row in focus, whatever you've focused on. You want everything to be in focus. And that's where you can control aperture. So there's two things with the aperture. It controls the amount of light that comes in and it also controls the focus that comes in as well. Now there's something to be wary of. I'm not going to be too critical. Um, there's a lot of, there's a new um, program on a lot of phones like the iPhones and everybody seems to be doing it now. Uh, where you can actually, it will add shallow depth of field to the image. It's called portrait mode. Now it's getting good, it's very, very good. Now what happens is you take a picture of a person, the processor inside the phone acknowledges that it's someone's face and it will literally cut it out and then everything behind it will make blurry, okay? Sometimes it smudges a bit, perhaps over the year or there'll be a bit that doesn't look quite right but they're getting better and better at it. The new iPhone 10 is supposed to be amazing at that. So it does look more professional. You can get these really professional looking shots where the background is completely mushed out, just like you see from these professional images. But that isn't the same as a prime lens or a, a bigger lens that's letting in a lot of light, okay? <laughs> so it's sort of like it's a gimmicky thing and if it works and it makes the image look good, then great, you can be really creative with it. But don't think that that's going to let you start shooting in low light situations like a big lens like the one I just showed you because, you know, having a lens like that compared to the, a little tiny lens on a phone, it's just not going to be the same, okay? They are quite a shallow depth of field on phones, like f1.8 or something like that. But that's an artificial effect. It's not helping so much with putting a lot of, uh, with low light situations. 
as much as a professional lens or you don't have to spend a lot of money on these sort of lenses that can do that okay now uh what was next i was going to talk about aperture um yeah that's i think that's just about it there is something called variable aperture and a fixed aperture in lenses now i'm going to talk about that when i talk about difference in lenses okay because sometimes perhaps you've seen when you've been looking as to buying different lenses you'll see a lens that say a 70 to 300 mil so it's quite a range you think brilliant or a 50 to 200 millimeter that's a better illustration and you see it and it's like 70 80 pounds 50 to 200 millimeter and then you'll see another lens that say a 70 to 200 millimeter that looks a lot bigger and heavier and it'll be like 1500 pounds 2000 pounds and you're thinking why is there such a difference okay now there's a thing called variable aperture which the cheaper lens will have and then there's a constant aperture, which the more professional lens will have. Now I'm going to describe this in a different vi video. So if you've already heard those phrases like variable aperture and constant aperture, I will do that later on, but I don't want to clog this one up too much because I'm just talking about what aperture is. So it really controls that shallow depth of field that you're getting. And also it lets in a lot of light. So you can start controlling this for the different effects you want. So you've got to be careful with that aperture. If you go as wide as possible and you get closer to the subject, then the chances are, you, whatever you focused on, you've got to be really sharp on the focus. If it's someone's eye and you're at a really wide aperture, then if you get that focus slightly wrong, their eye is going to be out of focus and the tip of the nose is going to be in focus, okay? So that's aperture and that's how it works. I hope that sort of makes sense now as to what it is. It's similar to your eye, just remember that. It's how wide your pupil is how much light is being let in and all the different lenses do different things so you get smaller aperture lenses that start at say f3.5 they're sort of that's the general go-to beginning and then you get the more expensive lenses that start at say f2.8 uh, that's just the measurement of how wide so if i get this lens again this is a quite a big aperture so that's f1.4 and then it'll go down to say f2.8 then f3.5 f.8 f.10 f.20 and so on and so on so that's what it means when it says f 1.8 or something like that now we'll get onto prime lenses later and don't think that you have to spend an absolute fortune um, to get that wide aperture that professional aperture because i've done a video on this one already this little lens it's a it's a 35 millimeter 1.8 d uh g sorry 1.8 aperture so that's quite wide some of the really expensive lenses go to like 1.2, 1.4, like that one. But this is a 1.8. That's still pretty big aperture. That lets in an awful lot of light. And this cost about £100. So don't think you have to spend a fortune if you want to start getting that wide aperture and start doing those professional shots. Everybody loves those shots where the background is completely blurred out and it looks more professional, doesn't it? And when you do, uh, perhaps if you've got a zoom and you get the aperture as low as possible, you can really isolate the subject, say you're taking a picture of a family member or your girlfriend or something like that. And then when the background's all nicely blurred out, it gives it that really professional look, doesn't it? Also, the wider aperture, even a little lens like this, at f1.8 compared to a cheaper lens, say in starting at f3.5, the amount of light difference that's going to let in if you're in a low light situation. So if you've got this one at f1.8 in a dark environment, it's going to let in so much more light and the camera isn't going to struggle so much. So therefore you can raise your shutter speed and have a faster shutter speed like we talked about in the previous video. If you've got a cheaper lens and it starts at f3.5, nothing wrong with that. Um, that's not going to let in nearly as half as much as light as this one. Okay, um, a lot less than that. And the more you crunch that down, if you start zooming and it starts going to say F5, F7, then it's really gonna kill the light. And if you're in a low light situation, that's gonna really, really push the camera to the max and make it start to struggle. So that's aperture. I hope that made sense. So that's the second thing. So you've got shutter speed and you've got aperture. So just remember like your eyeballs, like uh, blink, your eyelids are like the shutter speed and aperture is like your pupils, how wide and how small they get, letting in lots of light or not letting in a lot of light and also the shallow depth of field, how much is in focus and how much is out of focus. Okay, so I hope that helped. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is ISO, okay? That's how sensitive the sensor is, okay? Thanks a lot.